Morning guys, welcome to the gym. Uh, what we've been doing every morning here lately is for what, about the last four days? So we just got this thing set up, it's actually awesome. I'll show you guys around. But what we wound up doing is for every morning we've been getting up, we've been lifting and this is the office and shop. You guys can tell the class table's been moved, everything's kind of been moved. Uh, we were getting ready to close this shop down, but we got our new stamps that we're trying to get right now. And so we have to have a shop inspection. So that's why a lot of things are missing in the shop, but at the same time, um, we have to have it for that. But this is the morning routine as of now. It's been awesome, it's been great. So been just lifting and trying to uh, feel a little bit better about our sales. It's been great, so been just lifting and Trying to uh, feel a little bit better about our sales. <laughs> All right, guys, what's happening? So I wanted to talk a little bit about the three strike welding rule. I had a lot of guys get on there. They were a little bit upset about it and don't understand what it really entails, right? They think that, hey, three, three freaking repairs, uh, you're done forever, it's over, get out of here. Guys, the, the thing with the three strike rules is that is an oil and gas standard. That's what we grew, that's what we came into the industry doing. It is still the standard. Um, usually a lot of the pipelines that we did work on, a lot of the oil and gas work we did work on, um, it was three repairs, you're out on that job, right? So if you guys did, so if you worked for the same company and you were on a facility, I'm just explaining how this rule worked. If you were on a facility and you got one repair on that facility and then you wound up going to another facility and you started welding on a new area, right? A new job. The, the rule would like cancel out, right? Cause that, that was on that facility. You're fresh, you're clean, you're on a new job, three strikes, you're out. Um, that was kind of how it was for us. Uh, I've, I've, I've caught three repairs before. I've been, you know, let go because that was what the standard was. You have to have a standard in the welding industry. The problem with it is if you don't have a standard and it doesn't apply to everybody, the whole standard needs to apply to everybody. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter if you've been with them for five years. It doesn't matter if you've been with them for three weeks. If you catch three repairs on a job, it is, you're done. You're freaking, you're, you're either moved to a new area in the company or, you know, that's just the way it works. Usually in the gas world is you are done working for that individual gas company until your probation period is up. So basically what that's saying is, okay, if I work for this gas company, I catch three repairs. Sometimes, and I, it's not, every gas company is their own, you know, their own rules. Um, it's a six month probation. Uh, you cannot weld that gas company for six months. Then you have to go retest, completely retest for that gas company. If you bust that test, it's a one year sus suspension. Sorry, I'm having a hard time getting my words out for some reason. If you bust that test, it's a one year suspension. If you catch another three repairs, it's a one year suspension. It's like, so, so say you made it through your test, you're back to work, you're hired out, you're getting it done. You catch your repairs, you're let, you're let go for a one year suspension at that point. And then the rule goes again. If you bust your test, it's a lifetime ban. You're not allowed to weld for that gas company anymore. Or if you catch another three repairs, it is, you know, it's a lifetime ban from that gas company. Everything is to their discretion, right? So these are just rules that we lived by. This is the way that we came up in the industry. This is the way it happened. And it's what we have pulled into our own company because the issue with not giving a standard is that now everybody tends to kind of, you know, they're, they're not putting in the effort that needs to be put in to, to maintain the quality of weld that needs to happen because they don't have any of the fear of, oh shit, man, like if I don't make this and it don't work out, well, I'm freaking let go, right? But then there's also a standard of getting your inches, making sure that you're keeping up, making, I mean, there's, there's a production standard to everything you're going to do. 
not only with my company, but with other companies, there's always a production standard. When you estimate this work, see this is probably what a lot of people don't understand, is when you estimate work, you are expecting your welders to make a certain amount. You're expecting your labor hands to be able to bolt up a certain amount. You're expecting to put in enough footage to be profitable for the day because we know that you know we're profitable for six days. Man, there's a hiccup one day right there. It took all the profit out, but we're still zero, right? So we're trying to gain that ground, hiccup. Okay, it's all right. We're, we still have enough profit in there that it's, it's profitable. We can still make a little bit of money. We're still trying to, we're, we're gaining ground. We're trying to move, right? And so this is kind of the thing that a lot of people don't understand. And then on top of that, if you have x-rays and phase array and hydro tests and all this other stuff that needs to be accomplished, you want to know that when you put that piece of pipe in the ground or it's in the rack or wherever this piece of pipe is, it is going to hold up to the standard that you need it to hold up to. That's the three repairs, you're out. That's, uh, you know, grinding outside the bevels, you're out. If you're, you know, there's certain things in certain, you know, areas, like if you're TIGging, you're gonna make sure everything's clean all the way around it. And there's just, there, there, there are standards on a per job basis, if that makes sense. And everybody is fully aware of what they are when they start. And it's not just for my company, this is for everybody's company that does pipe work that does critical piping, that does welding, that does, you know, there's a standard. There's always gonna be a standard when you show up to a project. And it's not to beat you down, it's not to freaking knock out all the greenhorns, it's not, it's not to do anything like that. It's to say, this is where you need to be. This is what you need to do to keep up. And this is, you know, this is the no-nos. This is where you don't get into. If you get three repairs, it's done, right? We close the book on you. You either move to a different part of the company to where they're doing different work for somebody else. If you're good and you're able to keep up and just say, man, in one year he did this many welds, he caught three repairs on this job. Let's move him over here until his probation period is done and then we'll move him back, right? A lot of companies will do that if you're worth keeping around. If you're not, that's their chance to close the book on you. So it's not to be aggressive, it's not to be um, rude to you, it's not to slap your hands, it's not to freaking make you feel bad about yourself. I've been run off a few jobs. When I first began, I made it, uh, so my first job was a pipeline. I caught all my repairs, all right? I had a really good attitude, the gas company let me stay on. Crazy, it never freaking happens, all right? They let me stay on, I learned through that job. The next job I got on, I caught three repairs in three days. Gone, please leave, right? That, and it was over, it was done. Another guy built fab, had almost 60 welds in this piece and it was all wrong in every direction. But because he didn't bust the x-rays, he stayed on. I busted the x-rays, I got let go. Um, the next few jobs I learned and learned, and then I move on to a, a company that I worked for like six years for, right? I made thousands of flipping welds for these guys for years and years. For like four years, I, all I did was just weld my guts out for these guys. On one job in a row, boom, 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 I caught three repairs. They let me go. They moved me to a different part of the company until my probation period was up, but then they, but they still had to let me go. There's a standard, you have to have a standard in welding, that's part of it. If you don't, welders will walk over you, welders will see how far they can get. If they know they can catch repairs, they're gonna, you know, they're not gonna put in the effort that needs to happen to this weld. And if they catch a repair, it's no big deal. I'll just go up, fix it, or send somebody else up to fix it. Well, no, now it's a big deal. Now it's a big, big deal, because not only did we shoot it, and that costs money, um, now we have to send somebody else up there to weld it, that costs money. Then we have to go back in there and shoot it again, that costs money. Everything costs money and it's taking away from the bottom line of the job. If a company is not profitable, they cannot continue to grow, which they cannot continue to make progress, which means they can't go get bigger and better jobs for the welders that are relying on them to get the jobs. So this is all things that, you know, this is the three strikes, you're out rule. This is what I'm trying to explain to you. Hopefully I explained it decently. Um, I know that there are, there was quite a few comments on the last video about that. And so I'm just trying to bring it to light of what it actually is. Um, it's a standard. That's all it is. It is a standard. 
Um, it's not being rude to anybody. It's not putting anybody, it's not hurting anybody's feelings. It's when you hire on, this is what you know you have to do. This is not just for me. This is for the majority. I would say 95% of your piping career, if you want to weld pipe, is going to be that standard. Percentage of welds, I want to know that, yeah, we only shot 15%, but because my welders hold a standard and they don't know how much we're shooting, you can shoot all of it and it will be good, right? So anyways, guys, hope that makes sense. And uh, let's keep going onward and upward, all right?